Hello, welcome to our program on surgical pathology. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma, where uh, nearby is one of the world's largest collections of Chihuly glass, as you can see behind me. I thought this was an appropriate backdrop because uh, we'd like to talk today about uh, gross descriptions. And certainly there are some unusual forms and functions in his uh, artistic works. Uh, but I'd like to talk to you today about uh, what we've come to refer to as the four paragraph format. Um, this is a really a basic skill for residents to develop, but really uh, can be improved upon by many of us uh, in advanced stages as we continue to refine our ability to describe succinctly and clearly uh, the gross uh, pathology that we see in our day-to-day -day practice. When we think about the purposes of a gross description in a pathology report, there are a couple of purposes that come to mind that should be remembered. First of all, we're documenting and validating the sort of surgical procedure that was performed. So if the surgeon codes for a uh, you know, uh, massive soft tissue resection and we receive a, a small uh, piece of fat, fat, that's not going to jive. Um, we're also uh, going to provide from our gross description important clues to the diagnosis and potential differential diagnosis, sites of origin um, and nature of the uh, tissue that may be involved. Uh, <clears throat> most importantly, uh, very often we're providing very key staging information that's going to determine uh, therapy. Uh, additionally, we're going to examine margins in many of these cases that will further guide therapy or subsequent uh, adjuvant uh, uh, chemo or radiation therapy. And finally, we provide a key, a visual as well as a written key to help interpret the slides uh, hereafter. Once our memory has faded as to the specifics of this specimen, uh, a pathologist, another examiner uh, can come back and reconstruct grossly in their mind with a nice picture from the words that are used to describe uh, grossly what has happened. So uh, what is the four paragraph format? Well, before we get to that, I think there are a couple of things to remember. Specimens come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. They have external surfaces, they have cut section surfaces, sometimes they have internal surfaces, sometimes they're very monomorphous, sometimes they're hetero heteromorphous, they have different uh, accompanying things. And so gross photography also plays an important role to document color, to document things like little strands of hair, um, as well as uh, uh, other tissues that may be there. And sometimes if there are missing details, having that gross photograph to come back to can be invaluable. So never forget the importance of good gross photography uh, in evaluating a sample. Also, before we begin, we should be very familiar with the staging information for that type of specimen. And if one hasn't handled or reported a particular specimen type for a while, uh, it's good to review these. So go to the CAP website, uh, click on the cancer protocol templates, scroll to those biomarkers, and here's the website I've listed there below. Um, and once you get there, you'll be able to choose based on organ system and type of specimen uh, and type of tumor that may be involved, what the key parameters are. So let's say we had chosen uterine cervix excision. We click on that link and then examine what the, the template has. But it's very important to remember that these explanatory notes that come at the end of each of these protocols contain very vital and very helpful information about orientation, size and staging, interpretation of certain findings, where the measurements should be taken from, how the nodes should be counted, uh, and other uh, important details, along with many valuable references uh, that can be invaluable. So uh, we encourage all of our residents to study these before they begin to evaluate one of these kinds of specimens. So I said four paragraph format. What are they? Well, paragraph one. That's essentially an overview. It documents the type of specimen, probably the type of procedure that it came from, weight, one indicated, and important measurements, overall size, what organs are present should be mentioned. Uh, so for example, received fresh, labeled with a patient's name and identifier, 
and this procedure type, radical hysterectomy, a 398 gram radical hysterectomy specimen, including an unopened, unopened uterus with attached cervix, 11 by 7 by 5.2 centimeters, vaginal cuff, 1.2 centimeters in length, right ovary, 3 by 2 by 1 centimeter, left ovary, 3.5 by 3 by 1 cm, and unremarkable fallopian tubes, each 5 centimeters in length with an average diameter of 0.7 cm. Everything that's going to be examined is there listed in that first paragraph and the type of procedure, overall sizes and dimensions that will be important. The second paragraph hones in on the pathology. We look to include what the tumor size is, where it is, what its relationships are to the margin, what's going on in the lymph nodes, whether there's vascular invasion or other pertinent features, whether there's necrosis, uh, those kinds of things that can be uh, identified from the gross evaluation. So an example, there's a tan pink centrally ulcerated pale tan tumor, 1.5 by 1 by 0.8 cm, located on the posterior surface of the ectocervix, 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 cm. So that's the size of that uh, ectocervix. The mass appears to invade to a depth of 0.8 centimeters and is grossly 0.5 cm from the deep circumferential soft tissue margin. And we might here specify that's the closest margin. The mass extends into the upper endocervical canal but does not invade the lower uterine segment. The mass is two centimeters from the vaginal cup mucosal margin of resection. The tan yellow parametrial tissue contains an irregular 0.3 by 0.2 by 0.1 cm pale tan firm area grossly suggestive of tumor. The right parametrium appears free of tumor. No parametrial lymph nodes are identified. So pertinent negatives can also be important and can be included in this uh, uh, description of the, the tumor and its specific pathology. Then we come to paragraph three. This is where things are less important, but still need to be mentioned. The incidentals, if you will. Um, the external loss is probe patient, distorted by tumor. 0.2 cm in diameter. The endocerebral canal is 3.1 centimeters in length and has a pale tan glistening mucosa in areas uninvolved by tumor. The pale tan, tan, tan pink endometrium measures 0.2 cm in maximum thickness. The tan pink myometrium measures 1.3 centimeters in maximum thickness and shows a 0.7 cm well circumscribed tan white subserosal nodule located in the anterior wall. Notice here that we refrained from making the diagnosis of a leiomyoma or fibroid. We described it as a nodule, reserving that for the microscopic examination. The ovaries display multiple smooth-walled cysts ranging from 0.3 to 1.5 cm that are filled with clear yellow serous fluid. So there we've described both the pertinent things and now some of the important dimensions and so forth, but not critical to the diagnosis. And finally, paragraph four, should include the section code and inking code that allows one to uh, navigate back and forth between the microscopic slides and where that tissue arose from. Uh, so in the case of a cervical excision, blue endocervical margin, black is our exocervical margin, yellow is the right paracervical tissue, green the left paracervical tissue. The cassette summary is as follows, 1A, 12 through 3 o'clock quadrant, and so forth and so on. So those details then allow someone to look at a slide that's only going to be given a number and a code and go, oh, this is from the 9 to 12 o'clock quadrant, and therefore know whether or not the tumor is at the margin at that site. So another example, uh, paragraphs 1 and 2, received in formal and labeled Jones Joan in uterus, cervix, bilateral tubes, and ovaries, an intact uterus, right fallopian tube, all the dimensions are here. The serosa is unremarkable. The os is patent. Now, we didn't have to put that there. That maybe uh, uh, could have gone in the third paragraph. On opening the specimen, now, many people describe their tissues sort of following the process of dissection. Um, but uh, this paragraph, or this, this discipline of focusing in paragraph two on the specific pathology should allow you to. Uh, provide overall information and then hone in on the specific pathology rather than uh, necessarily following the pattern of dissection uh, that may follow a different order. But we describe the tumor, give its dimensions, 
You know, there's, there's end, some end, normal endometrium, the thickness of the myometrium, noting that it's almost completely replaced by tumor, and noting the extension of the tumor into the endocervical canal, and therefore the distance from there to the anterior exocervix, its closest margin. Finally, paragraph three and four, uh, the right ovary, incidental findings, smooth cysts on the outer surface. Left ovary has also multiple smooth line cysts and so forth. These could be an, another tumor. They could be pertinent, but they're not the main pathology that we came to view. And then finally, the uh, uh, section code that connects all the various tissues that were sampled and the various locations that were submitted so that any given slide can be mapped back to that initial specimen. Well, to summarize then, paragraph one, is the specimen and the procedure. Paragraph two, focus on the main pathology, the specifics and details, locations, relationships that are gonna be important in staging and uh, providing therapy for this patient. Part three, paragraph three, the incidental or other findings, and paragraph four, the section and color map that make the slides a key part of this uh, process. Now, gross descriptions are not something that's that are complicated, uh, but we need to approach them in a, in a uh, systematic and uh, re re uh, repeatable manner so that we are enabled to make them complete, because that's what's important to proper patient care now and in the future. Developing clear, concise, and complete language should be our goal and the watchword for our gross descriptions. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about this tool that we use in our program. And I hope that that's been useful to you as you consider uh, how you will apply it in your practice. Uh, gross pathology and gross descriptions are an important part of pathology reporting and should be attended to with care and accuracy. Uh, making mistakes there can be disastrous. Um, and the time to do it is at that initial time of evaluation, not coming back a week later or a year later uh, to try to recreate something that has uh, long since passed. Well, thank you again for joining me. If you like this, please hit that subscribe button and uh, share it with your friends. Uh, we do plan to re uh, release additional materials. So uh, having you subscribe will enable you to get uh, early early notification of those uh, uh, releases. And again, thank you so much for joining me.